Lions Rock Productions. This is Jay Moore. This is Greg Cruz. This is Bryce Vine. This is Dexter from The Offspring. This is Nathan This East. is Sebastian Younger. This is Daryl This is Stuart Copeland. This is Mick Gillette. This is Andy Summers. This is Dr. Bob Greenberg. This is Gabby Reese. This is Rob Bell. Hey, this is John Leon Guerrero. Hey, and this is Pete A. Turner. <laughs> Hey everybody, this is Fran Strine, and you're listening to The Break It Down Show. And now, The Break It Down Show, with John Leon Guerrero and Pete A. Turner. So I was on the road with a band, Stained, and we were in Kansas City, I'll never forget it. And he calls me, he's like, hey, can you be in Nashville tomorrow morning? I'm like, well, I'm on the road. <laughs> you know what I mean? For another three weeks. He's like, well, Dolly needs an album cover done, and then some press photography. Holy shit. Yeah. Any way that you can skip out for a day or two. So I went and talked to the guitar player who's kind of a leader of staying in Mike Wushock. Like, Mike, I got this really cool opportunity. He goes, go. Are yeah. You crazy? Yeah. I'll see you in Memphis or wherever right. the hell we're going to be in a couple of days. I'm like, okay. Fly in. And I had a, a, you know, when I do album photography, I have a group of people as well that do all my lighting and get everything ready. And she's really white. Mm-hmm. You see Dolly, she's white with platinum hair. Yeah. So you got to be careful because doing photography, you can blow her out easily. So I had my team go up the day before and pre-light a mannequin head with her wig on it at her studio. Oh, that's terrific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I walked in at 8 o'clock in the morning. She was arriving at 10. She came in dressed as not like to the hilt. Yeah. yeah. did this crazy photo shoot. And in the middle of it, she stops us, and there's a film crew there, you know, and they were filming behind-the-scenes footage for a music video she was doing. She's like, could I shave your head for a scene in this movie? In the, in the, Yes. Video? I'm like, yeah, absolutely, 100,000%. <laughs> you can show my head. Yeah. No, nobody, I'm bald if you're yeah. listening. So she sits me down, has a runner go get some, you know, Barbasol or whatever, yeah. and a Bic shaving razor, and uh-huh. she uh-huh. proceeds uh-huh. to shave my entire head. Yeah. It's in the music video. It's called Changes. Yeah. And then I got to work with her again uh, about a year ago. She put out another record, so I did her, her album cover then. But she is just the best. She, and she makes you feel, and you're talking about laughing. Yeah. She's just full of positive energy. But what I was going to say about the crying thing is sometimes you're, you're, you're like, how the hell did I get here? Because it's still, I don't take any of this for granted. So I'm working with somebody like a Dolly Parton or Sting or right. some of these giant bands I work for. It freaks me out. Yeah. As a fan, and, and, you know, growing up listening to these people, I'm like, I'm a guy from Lilburn, Georgia. Right. <laughs> that lives in some weird town in California now, but. How did my journey, how did I get here? I started yeah. calling these Merkel moments mm-hmm. or Markle or Mer- Megan Merkel. It's Merkel, right? Mm-hmm. And because, you know, here you are, you're fantastically famous. You've achieved your dream. You've got, you're an actress in a successful TV show. Right. And then you look down at your mom and you're like, I'm marrying Prince Harry. Yeah. And you're like, how? My mom's a queen. Fu- yeah. 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 <laughs> how the fuck did I get here? Exactly. You know? And they're like, but wait, are we really, like, it's like this more than a pinch yourself moment. Yeah. It's just. It's, oh, man. Are you kidding me? Yeah, and the fact that I say it right, like, I was traveling back and forth weekly to meet with Ray. Yeah, just doing development and stuff for the film. Like I said, I had to bring these stories out of him. So he was kind enough to let me stay at his, you know, giant palace. I'm sitting there laying in this bedroom that's about half the size of this building, <laughs> like literally, <laughs> Jesus. one of the bedrooms. It's got like seven or eight bedrooms. Yeah, in Ray Parker Jr.'s crib. Yeah, yeah. And I'm gonna yeah. wake his up with palatial the palatial estate. Yeah, and then I'm you his got, guest. Yeah, then you wake up and there's the maid there. She's like, "Would you like a cup of coffee, Mr. Strine? Or some eggs or something?" I'm like, "Sure." Yeah, you, know, so you got coffee made for you. And then we'll go out on the night or whatever. Like we'll get went to a Kodak event one night. He's got a giant spiral staircase that goes upstairs to the bedrooms. He goes, "I'm too tired, man, to climb these damn stairs." I was like, "And there's a couple bedrooms downstairs. Like you're just gonna sleep down here or what?" He's like, "No, follow me." So there's a closet door. You open it up. It's a fucking elevator. <laughs> See, we're going to take the elevator up. Uh, <laughs> Crush velvet, red thing. Of course. It's beautiful. So we go up. It's like, you're you're crazy, man. Does it play like, I'm, I'm in, in love. I'm in love. I'm in love. <laughs> yeah. With the other one. Uh-huh. 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 I got my own elevator music. Yeah. He's so smart business. He's so business savvy. I was like, you need to teach me how you how you made all this money. Because what? What is the story here? I mean, you've had some big songs, but not yeah. like Michael Jackson. But he's living like Michael Jackson, like huge. Yeah. He's like, man, and you'll, and you'll hear about this in the film, too. I'll go ahead and yeah. tell a little bit about it here. But uh, his mentor growing up at a very early age, at about 20, was Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby's a billionaire. He may be a scumbag now yeah. or whatever. These allegations are even true. 
he taught Ray how to save his money, and Ray listened to him. Yeah. A lot of the guys would just go blow their money on a Rolls sure. Royce or giant houses. Right. He told me, he's like, you get your 100, you know, so I think at 22, you got a check for $2 million for uh, a Barry White song you wrote. And The Problem with Love. Okay. That's the name of the song. Mm. Ray wrote that. So he got a $2 million royalty check at 21 or 22 years old. And he's like, pay your taxes first. Then what's ever left over, you take 25% of that and immediately put it into a pension. Don't touch it. Forget about it. Take the other 25%, buy some stocks. Your other 25%, you're just going to keep safe and just put it in your savings and just forget about it. And then the last 25% is for you to, to do whatever you want to buy. Mm-hmm. But, but that's your living expenses. That's everything. You have to live on that. So you get another paycheck, and then you can do the same. So he did that throughout his career. He never touched. Holy cow. And he's just sitting on a mountain of money. Just every. And, and, and stocks that he bought oh, 40 years ago. Oh, yeah. And, and let's not forget that he didn't. Uh, he, re, he retired before, yeah, before Ghostbusters. He wrote Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. So he gets, he gets a call from Gary Lamell at Columbia Pictures, and it's like, we're having a whale of a time getting this song made. Are you interested? And he's like, N- not really. I'm taking care of my folks, and they're not doing so well, so I'm just taking some time off. They're like, we'll give you 50 grand if we just stay up overnight and just try to come up with something. So that's what he did. And in four months, that, that album sold 10 million units. And by the way, nobody gave a shit about soundtracks back then, so guess what? They gave him all the publishing and oh the master. Oh, my God. Because they're wow. just like, well, it's just... What's it ever going to do? Yeah. Wow. Today, it's sold 38 million units. That's I think. ridiculous. And he keeps, and I mean, every time there's a commercial, and he does it, it's worldwide, you know? Yeah. UK, Japan, yeah. Germany. Volkswagen commercials use who you're going to call. Sure. You know? So, yeah. He got, yeah. That's the golden goose. Yeah. You don't touch the golden goose. It's amazing how many... You know, like you said, the allegations and all that shit. And they were prob- uh, I didn't shudder to bring this up because all the women who are affected by the Cosby situation mm. deserve closure. I'm sure there's some. Yeah, it's a tr- it is tragic when it does happen. But there are so many stories of, of musicians mm-hmm. who were uh, positively impacted um, or, or, you know, got some guidance at the right time or something. I mean, he was he was at the pinnacle of his professional career he, he uh was a guiding light to a lot of right. a lot of people well, let me tell you something about these women on the road <clears throat> i was joking earlier about getting laid or whatever yeah it's, yeah this all that's all that happens sure you know they're attracted sure. to that or whatever but they do get you through some of the loneliest times ever because there's nobody out there yeah you know i was single for many years because who wants to date a guy that's gone nine months out of the year right or longer yeah and at a concert you're gone and you're at a concert and, yeah like and they're hearing chicks yeah in a, in a tour bus like who's right. that that's uh, just a girl that's the girl right. sucking my dick to minor. Yeah. yeah yeah so it's like you know those chicks are there even and, in the and best of circumstances that's candy she's not even sucking my dick but there's a dude sitting next to me and she's she sucking is. his she dick is sucking oh his yeah dick. yeah so it's you like see it yeah, all who over wants to get career who wants to get with that no nobody but but it's calm down now yeah yeah now it's Everybody's fucking vegan and doing CrossFit. <laughs> like the family's on the road. I'm like, what happened? This is Where are my roll. TRX straps? <laughs> yeah, I was like, what happened to the damn rock uh-huh. and roll? Yeah, it's yeah. completely changed now. Yeah, that's Bucket too bad. Because like, there are things that you won't out. see anymore. It's like those records that are never going to be broken because all the circumstances are yeah. different now. Yeah, you know the baseballs are different or the yeah. basket. It the circumstance there will never allow for. You know, Motley Crue to see if there's a mom and a daughter and a grandma who oh, will all do them something. at the same time. <laughs> there's a restaurant right right up here in this complex called Tuscanova. Uh-huh. It's an Italian place. I was sitting there Friday night eating, and Tom Lee walks in. He lives in a neighborhood, and uh-huh. he looks like he's been beat up yeah. with a baseball bat. He looked like dog shit. You know, wow. uh, yeah, I've heard he and his son right now are yeah, not having no problems. Yeah. Yeah. And it, you know what? It's like, pull your shit together, man. You got a kid. Yeah. And it, I've never been an addict. My father was an alcoholic. Yeah. Until right. Until the day, you know. The like, problem is the kid needs you and your. Get your shit together. Not together. Yeah. 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 And, like when, and, and guess what? Now your kid is 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 older and yeah. he's able and he's going to lash out. And before when your kid lashed out, he threw a tantr- temper tantrum. Yeah. Now he's got a he's got a bigger understanding of the fact that what he needs and is not getting 
could be satisfied by you if you had your shit together, mm-hmm. and he's going to lash out on your face. Oh, yeah. Definitely. And that's, and that's rough. When my ex-wife got pregnant with my kid, I didn't really do a whole lot of partying. I drank a little bit, some acid. And never did, wasn't a cocaine or anything, yeah. but I was like. Just some acid. You just some acid. <laughs> and, yeah, this was, you could, this was in the early 80s. I got a I got to quit everything. Yeah. Because I was, had no ambition to do anything. I was not doing what I'm doing now. I wasn't even taking pictures then. Huh. I just fell into it. So uh, I decided to stay clean, and I, I really didn't have anything to drink or anything until about three or four years ago. Living up in Northern California, there's Napa Valley. Yeah, there's a lot of away. wine yeah, right so outside I, so your I door. Yeah, I picked up drinking a little wine here and there with dinner, but yeah. nothing, maybe a glass of dinner. That's it. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's kind of my style, too. I mean, you know, might well, have I've beer every once in a while, might yeah. have some wine every once in a while. And I love, you know, bourbon. I love mm-hmm. spirits. I like to drink gin with a cup. You know, I have like that yeah. friend that we we have a friend, uh, Dr. Bob Greenberg. is a professor of music at, at Cal and lives in Oakland. And we go to his house and we get snockered on gin every yeah, once in yeah, a while. Yeah. But, um, you know, there's a uh, difference between having the proximity of the Napa Valley mm-hmm. and going, I probably should check some of this out because yeah, this I is mean, the best th- of it the world has like, to I've offer. I've been missing out all these years on this delicious red wine. Yeah. 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 That was so great. So well, and your son is, how old is he now? He's 28. 28. Just yeah. June 15th. Yeah, but he lives in Brooklyn. Yeah. Yeah. He lived with me for a while and he, he'd seen everything. He, he aspires to be a filmmaker but more like a Woody Allen or Coen Brothers type. He's not into the action or anything like yeah. that. He He's a watch. storyteller. Loves that kind of stuff, yeah. Okay. But uh, yeah, he, he's a pharmacist. Do you? When, when did he's you a re- pharmacist for mm-hmm. that's how he oh, earns his a, living. It's a yeah. good hedge. Yeah, 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 yeah. When did you realize you had to do this work? Because clearly you have to. You don't have a choice. It was it came to me by accident. To be honest with you, I I, 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 I used it. to sneak my camera into concerts only to capture memories. Nothing else. Not to become commercial. Or I didn't anything. give a shift to camera. I was just like, oh, there's a picture of Alice Cooper or yeah. you know Robert Plant or whoever. So I'd sneak my camera in, and of course I wanted to get the greatest advantage I could get viewpoint. Now, I didn't know how to use a camera, so half the time the pictures looked like shit, over, overexposed or not you know, too dark or whatever. And after a while, I got the hang of it. And then my, my friends and family were like, you're, you're, good. you're pretty good at this. Yeah. You got an eye. Well, you should after taking 4,000 pictures <laughs> at one right. show. 3,800 right. 3, shitty yeah, ones. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so... After a while, I refined my skills a little sure, bit. I was yeah. like, okay, maybe I should start paying attention. After a couple more years, I made a portfolio, and I sent it out to every publication. Rejection letter from all of them. We've got enough staff photographers. They don't, you, don't, you don't work for the magazine. You're just, you yeah, license your you're freelance. Yeah. yeah. So by some weird thing happening, the publisher for Metal, Metal Edge magazine, which was like the biggest metal magazine in the United States at the time, they gave me the editor's home address. So she was going to be forced to look at my shit. Yeah. So I sent it. She received it. And I didn't even know, but until I got an uh, envelope in the mail several months later, it was called a picture purchase voucher. So it's them letting you know they're buying a picture of yours. I was out of my book, and it was a photo of Alice Cooper, and it was on the cover of the magazine. Hmm. So my shit. first picture ever was Made the, it to the cover the of cover. Metal Edge. Good job, kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it was only a quarter paid. You've quarter, yeah, you know, they had sure. like a montage. But it still was on the cover. Yeah. It was a, one of my favorite artists at the time. Wow. So the next and thing you and know, Alice Cooper have become friends since then. Well, no, I've only met him the one time. But he oh. was really friendly. Okay. We'll talk about that after this little thing. All right. Next thing I know, she started sending my own assignments in Atlanta because all the bands would come through. They're Pantera. Sure. Some, like Slaughter. You got to yeah, play Atlanta. Atlanta. Yeah, all these bands. So I became her go-to guy. Then I did my first music tour in 2000 called Tattoo the Earth. And it was super heavy, like Slipknot, Slayer. And so your name gets out there. Yeah. And I was friends with a band called Seven Dust. I don't know sure. if you've heard of those guys yeah. from Atlanta. Huh. <clears throat> and they were recording a record, like their third album, with Butch Walker, who's a, not only a, a great producer, but a singer-songwriter as well for yeah. the Atlanta area. He, does, he produces Pink and Avril Lavigne, like a big-time producer. Right. And uh, I was in the recording studio with those guys. The A&R guy was there, and I had a little Sony Handycam with me. I was just recording whatever. And the A&R guy was like, oh, you do video work? Oh, shit. I'm like, well, fuck yeah, I do video work. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He goes, well, well, we're looking for somebody to produce a making of DVD that's going to be the, accompany the album. 
So when you buy the CD, there's a bonus DVD that comes with it yeah. showing the making of that album. I was like, well, I live here. I'm really good friends with the guys. They trust me. You know, I can, I can definitely do this. Yeah. Okay. Submit a budget. This is when out labels still had money. I had no idea what I was doing because I've only done photography. And I only bought the video camera when I went on a tour and just brought it with me to take my own personal movies, just like I used to do with the camera. Yeah. So I called a friend of mine out here that was a music video director, and I'm like, they want me to do this DVD. I think she goes, I'll do these all the time. $75,000. I'm like, $75,000? They only Jesus. want a 15-minute long thing. That's okay. Seventy. They, they got tons of money. I'm like, okay. So I came up. She helped me do the budget. I submitted it. Green lead. There you just go. Like just, just like that. Just like that. Didn't bat an eyelash. Didn't bat an eyelash. I didn't even own a computer. I'm not even lying. I did not own. I didn't know how to use one. I didn't even have one. Yeah. This first, was t- first thing I buy. Yeah. How to make a video for dummies, dude? I bought. It. You know what I bought? <laughs> What'd you buy? Final Cut for dummies. Nice. Final Cut two, I think it was. Let's see, yeah. there it is. So I bought the little round egg iMac thing. Yeah. So I kind of bullshit, and it came out great. It was a huge fan favorite. It has some really funny moments on it. That became that guy. Yeah. So like, ooh, we yeah. want to hire a friend to come in. It'd be like Nickelback or Stained or whoever, Seether. And all these bands, and then Who would uh, ever know? yeah. So I, when I was with Stain, they had me on retainer year round. So when they would do an album cycle. They they start from scratch. This episode of the Break It Down Show is brought to you by Lions Rock Productions. That's us. We publish, evaluate, and develop podcasts just like this one. Consult others to build their own and create associated content and content marketing strategies. So if you're launching or expanding your social media presence, your business, or your personal brand, or if you just want to take your media presence to the next level, reach out to us on Twitter at Pete Turner or at John LG69 at the Break It Down Show. There's a thousand ways to get a hold of us. Now enjoy the show. Staying, they had to be on retainer year round. So they would do an album cycle. They they start from scratch. So Aaron Lewis lives up in uh, the Berkshire Mountains of Massachusetts. They would rent me a car, and I just stay up there for seven or eight months while they're writing, recording, mixing the whole thing. And uh, I did a documentary called. It was just called Staying the Making of, their debut record. And it and it was highly controversial because the band went through a lot of shit during you know, making that album like the singer was being a complete dick the drummer got kicked out of the band for various reasons it was an eye opener for a lot of people and that's when I was just like you know what this is cool because I had a lot of emotion to it and like it was tragic yeah really tragic it was sad because I was really good friends with all those guys and to see those guys just fighting like this was not not a good feeling and uh, then I got called to do the Five Finger Death Punch tour and I was taking a summer off I got a call or an email from the guitar player. We hear you're the guy to come out on tour with us. Thanks for the offer. I'm taking the summer off. I'm fried. Right. Three weeks later, sends me another email. We still we can't find anybody we're happy with. Would you please consider doing it? I reject it again. Then he wrote me another email. About a week later, it's like, just name your price. Like, what will get you out of the house? So I gave him a note. I was like, if they can match this number, I'm out. So I threw a number out there, and they're like, pack your bags. You're coming to Palm Springs for rehearsals. <laughs> Damn. I was like, Fuck. That means the number wasn't big enough. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I should have made the number. Another. I should have put a one in front of it. Yeah, <laughs> no, sure. A bunch of more, yeah. So uh, I went out with those guys, and it was just a shit show. Yeah. Yeah, it was just not a good touring experience. I mean, they, they were a big band, but they don't travel well. At the, t- at the time, they weren't. They were, yeah. they were big. And the singer at the time was a complete nightmare. That, that's an advanced level band thing, though. Yeah. Getting that travel part right, you know, whatever oh, band man. it is. Anybody who's done it for a long time, they know how to do it. Yeah. Even if they don't get along, it's got to like, be comfortable, man. Oh, yeah. Spend the extra to whatever be. it's going to be. Because my tour was staying in those guys. It was first class. Every hotels. Right. Like they treat their crew like family. Like there's lifers that have been there since. Sure. They were because they're they like your signed. crew. Like I know this guy's going to yeah. make sure they're going to deliver right. every time. Yeah. So I was with those guys for eight solid years, man. And so I still talk to the seven guitar Seven dust, uh-huh. five finger death punch, four non blondes. You know, <laughs> uh, who oh, else? Oh. Any, any back, threes? Any three doors down. Three doors down. There Did you a go. lot of work with those guys. Still, All right, really we got a two friends. in there anywhere. Two. No. Oh, Tupac. Damn it. No. Tupac. Yeah. You know what? I do have a little Tupac story. See, See. I do. There's a guy in hired gun that's in there for three seconds. His name is Michael. Uh, Michael Fish Herring. I call him Fish. Uh-huh. Uh, I was only a camera operator. I didn't direct the video, but Nas did a remake of Tupac's Thug Mansion. Uh-huh. It was when I was still living in Atlanta many, many years ago, and I got called to be a camera operator on, nice. the, on the music video. So 
in essence, I kind of There's a connection. Yeah. So Ooh. two pock, two three pock. doors down, yeah. five finger death punch, seven dust. Oh, yeah, that's right. So you got a pattern. I do. Yeah. That's what we you should work on Wonder Woman. No. One, one, no. <laughs> right? No, oh, One Direction. It. One Direction. Boom. No, never work with it. Yeah. They'll, they'll call. Yeah. It's part of what you <laughs> think. It's almost inevitable. I'm trying yeah. to think of all the art. I've worked with a bunch of cool people. You know, there's a band. One of my favorite tours ever did was with a band called Dragon Force. Really? And they did, remember the uh, Guitar Hero? Yeah. They, they were the band that you had to beat. Oh. They were that technical. Like, they're just freaks. Yeah. And uh, I got called to go on a tour with those guys. They're just maniacs. Like, the, the one guitar player, Herman, who's like the, the guitar god, was, was born in Hong Kong, so he's you know, Chinese or whatever, but he raised in, in uh, the U.K., He's okay. got a British accent, Whoa. full on. Uh-huh. Yeah. So you're looking at him, it's like equilibrium is all weird. Totally. You know, but he loves. He's right looking over at here. Jet Li and talking to Hugh Grant. Yeah, exactly. It's like the Korean kid that's got the yeah. southern accent. You're like, oh, what? Is, it just oh, does yeah. not. Oh, I know. Well, I tell people I'm born in Spain. They're like, you sound like a hillbilly. <laughs> it's like, well, yeah, I well, lived there for five years. I grew up in. Atlanta. Well, Billy Bob Thornton was born in Spain. Not really. <laughs> yeah. I know. He's here tonight. <laughs> I think he's performing with his band, The Box. Oh Masters. no, you kidding? serious? Wow. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh. I have a good friend of mine that's his photographer. Wow. Yeah. I'll tell you another cool, another aha moment for me in my photography career, because I wasn't making any money working for metal. I just like, they didn't live photography. It's yeah. like, here's 60 bucks for this right. or 100 for that or for Rolling Stones, a couple hundred. I'm like, is it? Yeah. Well, there's world famous uh, photographer's name is Neil, Niels Lozauer. He did the Van Halen one album cover, like all that kind of stuff. Like yeah. the guy. And I was at an AM show many, many years ago, and I'm like, it hurt me. He'd see my name in the magazines or whatever, and I'm like, how the fuck do you stay afloat? He goes, are you shooting any ad photography for him? I was like, no, just live stuff. He goes, get the fuck out of the, that's, go, go, do, go shoot advertising. That's the shit that he does just so he stays in the advertising mix? Well, you got to go shoot, like, Ibanez, yeah. you know, PV, Gibson. Yeah. yeah. So I started making those calls, and sure enough, man, the bank account was like, fat i was like wow i've been missing out all these fucking years man yeah have been doing this five years earlier yeah should have bought that how to how to make money shooting video Fit, yeah i know right <laughs> how to become a real photographer yeah how bill cosby tells you to save your money you yeah know? exactly so man these people are like you know i remember i did one for orange amps they're like okay we have twenty six thousand dollars I was like, 26000 And I'm doing the math. I'm yeah. like, I can do this for a What the two. fuck am I going to do with yeah. all that money? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, okay, this sh- I know this shoot's going to cost about 2000 to 2500 bucks yeah. all in. And I had to go to, I even had to travel to D.C. to do it. Like, we rented out this old garage and lighting everywhere. It took half a day. And they don't give a shit about it. The money's got to go. Yeah. You know? Right. And they want the money to go so they can get a bigger budget for next year. You know, now... Forget it. Yeah. 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 He can't get different anything. Time, yeah, yeah. Way different. I remember when it when it hit, it scared the shit out of me. I'm like, what am I going to do? Yeah. You know? But I, I was, make movies. No yeah, big deal. but I, even that's scary. Man. What do you think is going to happen with Gibson? Oof. That's such a big brand itself. Yeah. You know? I think they're going to come around. Okay. They just got to get the right people in there. Yep. It's never it going to go. Like it's too big of a weird uh, push to go towards consumer electronics. It yeah. doesn't seem like that. That's their wheelhouse. No, you know? no. It seems like they're betraying their what I'll, should be their. I'll tell you what I think happens to them. They they don't figure it out because it's hard to figure out. It is. And, Let me tell you. And, and and the brand is worth something, so yeah. they'll do boutique guitars, high end, yeah. five thousand dollar guitars. Yeah, I they think sell twenty five thousand of them a year, and make money. Yeah. yeah. Let me tell you. Uh, you know, I shot Hired Gun digitally mm-hmm. with a camera called the Red. Yeah. yeah. Hundred thousand dollar camera. Beautiful camera, but it's not film. Yeah. And we did our press screening. I was saying about you earlier. In L.A., there was a gentleman sitting in the front row with Kenny Aronoff. Mm-hmm. It was Kenny's friend. Movie's over. We did our Q&A, and I'm going out in the lobby just to get away. And he approaches me. He's like, i got to talk to you for a second. I was like, hey, he goes, why didn't you shoot your movie on film? I was like, because it would have cost me $7 million. Because film's really expensive. Yeah. He goes, well, my name is Steve Bellamy. I'm the president of motion picture at Kodak. This film's amazing. If you'd have shot this on film, you'd be qualifying for an Oscar this year. Here's my card. Let's have a talk. Your next film will be shot on film. So I had a conversation with him, and he gave me a sweetheart deal and signed me on as one of the directors. So I get film at a very lovely discount. Yeah. It's going to afford me to be able to shoot on it. And that's a dream. 
Yeah. You know. Sure. It's the same thing with, with Gibson. They'll kind of, like Kodak went away for many, many, many years, and they're now making a resurgence. Sure. So every, I'd say for every – Somebody movies, figured something out with yeah, that. Yeah, for exactly. every – Well, you know what it is is the emotion, because you can tell there's that emulsion in film yeah. that will give you that same emotion – that like a great score, a great scene in the film. Because mm-hmm. when you're watching, yeah, when you're watching digital, you can see the hard edges around a body. And yeah, everything. it's just not. Even if you don't see it, you perceive it. You perceive, yeah. It's yeah, just it's like, like, and when I watch yeah. movies now, I can tell. Like I went to go see Ocean's Eight the other day. Yeah, yeah. Terrible. Then I went to go see something else. Like, you did, know. did you cry? No, <laughs> it was terrible. And Ocean's Eight. First of all, it wasn't Steven Soderbergh. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah and and it's it's the fifteenth copy of that. Who same was story it? Or yeah. whatever. I don't even know who did it. I don't. I mean, that's indicative of, of what what they had in them. I mean, you got the names yeah. on the screen, but that's not. That enough. doesn't matter. That's not enough. You yeah. got to have a great story. They did not. Have, I tell you, what was a great movie that freaked me the fuck out was Hereditary. Huh? I've not seen that. Oh, did you see it? I was big time into that movie. I yeah. was too. I, man. I went and saw it three times. I saw <laughs> I it twice. That movie too much. Yeah. 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 yeah so it was great. Let's talk about emotion. Yeah. That poor kid with his mother screaming with the nightmare, like. I wish you were never born. Yeah. I wow. wanted to miscarry you so bad. I'm like, holy shit. What am I wow. watching? This is, the most, this is the most disturbing thing anybody could ever say to a child. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? You want to break a, a kid. Yeah, but it was not. It was a nightmare. Yeah. Thank God, because I was like, I don't know if I can forgive this director and writer for putting this in the movie, because yeah. it was awful. The movie was heavy. Man. Heavy. Yeah. So good. Yeah. yeah. Those I are like the kind of movies I like. Yeah, me too. Yeah, just and did you watch The Witch? I didn't. See, The Witch is kind of like that. It's, it's not a horror movie. It's just very unsettling. Yeah. Yeah. The dialogue's a little weird because it's 16th century, but right. if you get past that, the story is horrific. Sometimes that's part of the charm. It yeah. is. Yeah. It was so authentic, it was creepy. And, and that, that authentic uh, 16th century dialogue brings you to a place where you have to wonder if human beings were wired differently. They most certainly were. You know, and, and yeah. that, that only adds to the mystique of whatever's weird about it. It's right. like, you know, this is a different kind of human being. Right. I didn't see the movie. I don't, I don't know what I'm yeah, I'm a huge about. fan of that director now. Yeah. What, what do you want? To, I mean, I know right now you're working on the Ray Parker thing, mm-hmm. and clearly that's going to be awesome because everybody yeah. wants more of your work. But what's, uh, what's out there, like maybe five steps ahead where you're like, I can't even really think about this yet, but I know I need to make... You know, I have a slate of projects okay. right now. So, I've, you know, first one is Ray. Uh-huh. <clears throat> and uh, next one's kind of a spinoff on Hired Gun, which would probably be a docu-series. But the one I'm really excited about that has a little bit to do with music, was more of a social angle, mm-hmm. is uh, there's a, a concert film. <clears throat> I don't think it's been released yet. Con- concert for Kombucha for the Cambodian landmines because mm-hmm. people are still getting blown up over there. But it was in the eight, early 80s. It was Queen, Paul McCartney. Wow. Uh, All right. The Who. That's a whole lot of nights. Oh, man. It yeah. was, it's incredible. Yeah, man. I got I to bet. see some of the footage. It's, it's sick. Yeah. But it's more of the story of the crisis going on. There's still 30, 40 million landmines that are active. That's and crazy. 40 or 50,000 kids that are stepping on them, getting their legs blown off. And I think it's a cool story. It yeah. needs to be told. And maybe some, you know, you can't solve all the problems. No. But you, you watch some of these documentaries like like the Mr. Rogers. It's, it's about having empathy and compassion for other human beings, especially in today's climate. Boy. You know, and that's yeah. why that's why it resonated so well. I mean, the movie's already made $10 million for Good. a $300,000 movie probably. Well, oh, I, and I, it grabbed the heartstrings yeah. immediately the first immediately. time you watched the trailer. Oh, man, the, watching the trailer almost crying. Yeah. yeah. But when you're there. And you have a Pittsburgh <laughs> connection too. Yeah. So there's that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great storytelling, but I've got a few things now. But I've got to really just, like you said, just focus on one thing. Yeah. Like you burn the bee right. dream thing. Yeah. It's like, okay, that's. Right. It's not time gotta, for that. It's not yeah. time. you got to right. focus all your. I'm, I'm telling you, making a hired gun was a real eye opener because everything else I've ever done it was handed to me. Yeah. Like all the music, all the art. I didn't have to do anything. Just put the pieces Capture. together. Yeah. Now, you're into, like, I didn't know about licensing music. Are right. you fucking kidding me? I was like. It yeah, cost how much to license? Of music to license. Ton. Yeah. I didn't know about music scores. I was I was using library music, and my music supervisor, who actually did the Wrecking Crew, her name okay. Julie Hillan. Huh. And that was an enormous task to get that enormous. license. Enormous. Yes. Oh, my God. She told me that was just like a nightmare. But I'm like, these library songs suck. Because they, they, yeah. they weren't doing the job. There was, didn't, no, there was no cohesive 
theme. Uh huh. So she's like, well, let me give you some agents and reach out to some composers. I'm like, well, isn't that going to cost an arm and a leg? She goes, it'll be the same, maybe cheaper than all these shitty library songs you're going to have to license. Yeah. And it was like forty, thirty-five, or 40000 to get a composer. And we wound up using an old EDM band. Not old, but an EDM band called the Crystal Method. Sure. Yeah. Back yeah. in the day. So they now score moves. They did Fast and Free of Seven. Oh, they do good. Bones. They do Home. Because there's money in their that. house. <laughs> Tons of money. Yeah. So I didn't know nothing about scoring. Either. That really is the thing. Like these musicians are mm-hmm. moving into that world. Oh, they have to. Yeah. yeah. So I, I was like, I don't know anything about what do I got to do. She goes, Well, find somebody you like. Then you're going to go down to a, a spot session. That's where you sit and you show the movie. You're sitting there with the composer. And you're yeah. Like, this is talk how about want. themes as you. Yeah. Walk I was like, I want to sound like this or that. So I spent a whole day with them. Couldn't have been more of a nice guy. His name's Scott Kirkland. Brilliant. He had zero time to do this, by the way, like two weeks. So I gave him a, a huge task, and he came through and just killed it. You know? Yeah. And it's something you don't hear in a lot of documentaries. It's like kind of EDM-themed yeah. type music, and I thought it resonated well. And Oh, it worked yeah. beautifully. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was really, really fortunate that I met the guy. What a, yeah, the music licensing was another thing. Here's, here's a tidbit that I'll tell you that nobody knows. Ooh. When Jay Graydon's doing the guitar solo for Peg, mm-hmm. okay, so so the listener knows there's two components to licensing music. One is the the publishing, that is the songwriter's share, right? right. There's another whole component called the master that the record label owns. Right. So the record label gets that money. The publishing money goes to the songwriter and artist, right? And you have to clear both. Both of them have to agree. Yeah. If one doesn't. You're you can't have it. Yeah. yeah. And this was before Walter Becker passed. <clears throat> and, of course, they're really good friends with Jay. So immediately they said, yes, you can use the song. Yeah. However, Warner Brothers was not having it. Nope. Not going to let you use the song. I'm like, fuck, we were right at the scene, man. We, we cut that. That was a $30,000 segment we cut. You know, it was done. Yeah. Like, we're clearing that. You we're, had a sunk cost already. Sunk. So I'm like, what's the workaround? And Julia was like, a re-record or like a, a karaoke version? I'm like, I can't do a karaoke version. This is a real music film. I can't put karaoke music on this. Yeah. And so I remember when I interviewed Jay, he's like, I still want to be in the game. I don't want to I don't want to be out. So I just called him. And I was like, I've got a problem. So I explained to him the issue, and he's like, I'll play it again. He goes, you got any money? I was like, yeah, we got some money. He's like, I want to do the re-record. He goes, I'll make it sound exactly. You won't even know the difference. I'm like, okay. He goes, give me a week. I was like, you got it. This is how crazy. When I tell you he's a mad scientist genius, this is how I mean. What you hear on in the movie, that's Jay Graydon. That's uh-huh. not the original. He re-recorded master. the whole fucking song. Wow. And it sounds, the tone. Matter of fact, we didn't record we didn't record this part, but I went to go visit him, and he had the guitar and the amp that he actually did the Peg solo 40 years ago. <laughs> he That's what he did it with, the yeah. same amp, same guitar. He goes, I don't know if the, the amp would even fire up because I thought it would start arcing and flames and shit because they haven't been turned on in 30 years. But it turned up. Fired up, and it did that, man. Well, here's the thing. We had the real Peg in the cut, so I had to go back to Skywalker, take that out, and replace it with Jay's. Yeah. He only recorded what I needed. He didn't record the whole song. Yeah, <clears throat> he did it so perfect that when the sound mixer went to go put the song in, yeah. he didn't have he didn't have to nudge it. Not even a frame. No shit. Not even one frame. He just Damn. laid it in there. One frame, everybody. Say is that. Twenty yeah. fourth of a <laughs> second. second. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't have to nudge not it one, one frame. fucking frame. We were just sitting there with our mouths open. I'm like, this is fucking nuts. That. Yeah. That. He's he, that good, man. Jay yeah. Graydon is a freak. He he gets to be all germ freaky because he does that. Yeah, he delivers the same same. He's skills, wired same problem, yeah. different, man. Like, yeah. I'm trying to think, if there's anything else, any kind of weird. Oh, in the Jason Newsted segment when he's talking about Cliff Burton dying, bus accident, you see the newspaper going across, like you know, Cliff Burton dead yeah. at 24. And Jason's telling the story about it. And you hear this bass riff playing. I had put a temporary score of Orion from Metallica in there. Sure. And Scott Kirkland's like, how am I going to beat this? I mean, this. Wh- why do you do this to me? <laughs> you know what I mean? You, you could have picked something else. Right. So he's like, give me the weekend. I'll have something. I'm like, okay. So I look at Dropbox. Monday morning, he pinged me. I was like, check your Dropbox. I'm like, okay. Now I'm listening to what's in the movie now, and I'm like, oh, my. I had chills. I thought yes. I was going to fall over. He goes, 
I made a phone call to a friend who's a bass player, the bass player for a band called Tool. So right. that's who did the bass overdub wow. for that. It's a good yeah. choice. Yeah, Justin Chancellor is his yeah. name. Just crazy, man. And he was a huge Jason Newstead fan and Cliff Bird fan. So it was like he was almost possessed by those guys and, and just nailed it. Yeah. One of the stories that you tell in in the film is the Jason Newstead story. The uh, yeah. highlight about that is that, you know, Cliff Burton was beloved oh, by yeah. Metallica fans. Yeah. And Jason Newstead stepped into that role, and not only was he able to take the mantle and honor it, mm-hmm. but he gave a new direction for fans to look and and not have to leave the Cliff Burton experience behind. Right. He came in. He was a different guy with a different outlook. He had different a different set of chops, mm-hmm. and he never betrayed the Cliff Burton thing. And man, that that story and the way you were able to capture how he felt about it. Oh, man, let me tell you something. I've known Jason for a bunch of years. I called him. I was like, "Can I? would you be in my movie? You have a really cool story. He's like, yeah, man. When you want, how about Saturday? I'm like, all right. So I show up with the crew to play Saturday. was set up. And Jason's a very intense guy in his own right. Just mm-hmm. very, everything's 100%. He is the hardest worker that I've ever seen in my life. Wow. I've never seen anybody work this hard, ever. He just he doesn't have to. Yeah. You know what I mean? But he does. But and you it's, work in an elite industry where yeah. you have to work hard even yeah. just to stay alive. Right. And he's outworking everybody. His work ethic is second to none. That's impressive. Nobody. I thought Mike Mushock from Stained was one of the hardest sure. workers. He makes Mike. He makes him look like a lazy what, welfare. What makes like, you say that, though? Give us an example of, of what that work looks like. Okay, so Mike Mushock was in the Jason Newsted band. Mm-hmm. He put in an album, and I would go over there every day to film because I made their, their making of DVD, and it would start at 10 o'clock in the morning and go till 8 o'clock at night, mm-hmm. seven days a week, Jesus. by the way, right? for three months before they went in the studio and cut one note. Wow. I mean, it was just redundancy, redundancy, all day, all night. And even Mike's like, I'm a, I'm a hard worker, but God damn, this is... Yeah, this is killing me. Right, you know, just like trust me, I'll make you a better player. Just keep keep with the program. And that's how I did. When he told me when he entered, when he did the uh, audition for Metallica, he had finagled his way to get a set list of the whole tour of the whole set that they mm-hmm. played on the the tour previously. He learned the whole set, every note, every set. note, every every song. And he walked in, and he looked at Lars. He goes, "Pick a song." He goes, "What do you mean? Just pick any song." Well, you know. Well, we got the Where do you want to start? Yeah, he goes, we Let's gave go you three right to learn. He goes, well, I'll learn all 12. Pick a song. He kept 50 bass players, and he was the last one. And he got a call back, and I think there was four or five other guys that were in the thing, and he came back and just nailed it. Yeah. He got the gig, and they beat the shit out of him. His whole career never stopped, you know. Yep. But uh, he worked hard, persevered, just kept his head down and, and did it. You know, the band came first. He goes, no kids, wasn't, didn't care about getting married. The band comes first. Yeah, that was exactly what they needed. That yeah. was the only thing they could have, yeah, uh, could have had in that place to pull them out of that hole. Right. And this, this really brings us nicely full circle because when you know what the movie is partly about is that those realities. Mm-hmm. When you want to play guitar in a band or bass or drums or whatever, there's yeah. a Jason Newstead out there who will absolutely kick you in the fucking dick oh, the yeah. second you take a breath. Yep. And, and as soon as you, yeah, there. right. So, I mean, that's what you're competing against. If you get complacent or lazy right. or start to get an attitude a little bit and try to step out in front of that star, yeah. you're going to get slapped yeah. hard. Yeah, absolutely. I've seen it. Yeah. yeah, and you might not recover from it. Yeah, I mean, you're gone. Yeah. Yeah, if, wow. you, if you think you're going to, because the star does have an ego, let me tell you. And if you try to, like, step on that ego a little bit too much, you're, you're sure. Up, yeah. They all talk about it, trust me. Yeah. They're terrified of the next young kid coming up behind them. Yeah, well, so they got a pretty sweet gig. Yeah. That's exactly. true. Yeah. So uh, the film is called Hired Gun. The filmmaker is Fran Stry. And, uh, hey, man, that movie was a motherfucker, and you are a Thank motherfucker, you. too. We <laughs> really appreciate you doing this with us. and we It was a lot of fun to make. It was hard, but a lot of fun. And yeah. for the people that want to watch it, it's currently streaming on Netflix. However, the good way to get it, it yeah, the good way is go to Amazon and buy yeah. a, uh, a DVD. Spend a few bucks. Get Spend the DVD. Yeah, get the extra uh, stuff in there with Steve Vai, I think. 
Greg Fellingaines tells some incredible stories about working with Michael Jackson. Oh, he's got great The stories. Jason Newston story, like you've never heard about the real reason he quit Metallica. And he yes. went there. Wow. It was one of the most intense interviews I've ever, I've ever conducted. And uh, he, he went all the way in. You That's also, worth the uh, uh, ten ninety nine for yeah, the Yeah, and I think actually on iTunes they, they do show the behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. So you can get it on iTunes, Amazon. Yeah. You can still download it on Amazon. And, and you guys know how this works. When you do go to Amazon and you buy it, do a five star rating because that yeah. helps people find the movie. It is an excellent movie. And Thank no you. bullshit. We're not getting paid to say that. Yeah, yeah. When you said yes, I would told John So you give me that five hundred bucks back? <laughs> <laughs> not a chance. Right. But, no, seriously, leave five stars. Leave a review because that's a way of, of also paying back for, for the great work that you've done. So, you, yeah. so I'll certainly will buy one and send it on to somebody else because I've watched it and I want them to get it. But, you know, it's the good, good gift. And mm-hmm. i give you the gift of five stars because I want people to know your work because it is. I appreciate it. In case nobody else knows, me and Dolly, we think you're great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love Dolly Parton so much. Well, and then keep a lookout for, for this new film with Ray Parker. Right. It's called Who You Going to Call? It's a brilliant story, man. Everybody, you know, you know him as the Ghostbuster guy, but mm-hmm. that's actually the smallest thing he's, he's ever done. Yep. Everything else triumphs that, and the, and the human being that he is. Yeah. So it's a human story, you know, morality, the whole thing. It's, it's it's. And you guys don't even know how much you love Ray Parker, so you're gonna. You're gonna oh, the fall stuff he played on, man, it's just yeah. timeless. Yeah. It'll never go away. And he's a bad motherfucker. Yeah, he is. And a cool motherfucker. Yeah. He's the cool, the nicest guy I've ever met. Well, I'd say Fran Strine is the nicest guy yeah. you ever met. Thanks a lot, man. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me on.